Do you know why I'm here? Do you know why I'm here? Why am I here? About dinosaurs. That's exactly right. I want to learn everything there is to know about dinosaurs. What's the scariest dinosaur of all time? T-Rex. No raptor fans? They're fast and they got big tails and they're like. No. T-Rexes can't squish stuff. That's true. Hello, my wonderful DIY friends. Welcome back to my channel. I'm DIY Danny, and this is a place where I help solve your home decor dilemmas with a custom DIY solution. Yes. Before we begin, I just want to note that some of the footage that you're going to see in this video was filmed before COVID-19. I have been sitting with this video for quite some time now. It was like a day away from being finished and then we all got put into isolation. So a lot of the beginning half of this video, you'll see me around people in public and then towards the end, we are in more isolation type situations. You're also going to see my hair in a variety of colors, fuchsia, pink, and purple, and then it's kind of like blue. Now we're kind of in a purple with some crazy uh, root actions. <laughs> It was only until now that Elle and I, who I will introduce very soon, could come up with a plan that we felt good about, that we knew we were taking the right precautions to be safe. So I just wanna say that every precaution was taken for myself, for Elle and her family and her kids. And a lot of those precautions I didn't show on camera. So that's why I'm telling you, do not worry. Everything is safe. I take this situation very seriously, especially when it comes to being around children and being around Elle and her family in her home. So I just want you guys to know that even though you don't see it on camera fully, so many measures were taken and both Jeffrey, my partner who came with me, and I were very, very careful. So today's DIY makeover is so friggin' magical. I don't even know where to start. This might actually be my favorite DIY install to date because of how much fun it was. There's something to be said about coming up with designs for kid spaces that just bring you back to such a genuine creative place. Ah. Or maybe I'm just a giant child, so I heavily related to these DIYs. But regardless, I would also like to take a moment to thank my friends and the sponsor of this episode, The Home Depot Canada. You know how much I love you so much. Thank you for helping to make this dynamite makeover happen. All of the items that you see in this episode are linked in the description box below, so go check it out after this video. But let's jump in our time machine and hop back to that Mesozoic era. Add it out. Roll the tape. Roar! <laughs> Ah, dog didn't even wake up. This DIY makeover is for my friend and fellow content creator, Elle Linquist. Elle is a mom of three. She has two boys, Ford and Cohen. Guys, are wearing dinosaur slippers? Oh my gosh. Can I have these? No. Did, they're not for me? They can't fit you. We could try. And one little girl named Brighton, who is the sweetest and happiest baby ever. You got a little dino on you. You're a dino baby. Dino baby. Elle's channel is all about self-growth, parenting, and intentional and mindful living. If you want to learn more about Elle, I will link all of her channels and social in my description box. What's your favorite dinosaur? I have three. You have three, okay. Pterodactyl. Pterodactyl. Which is I think I had that last week. What is that? <laughs> Just an kidding. Ankylosaurus. An ankylosaurus? Do they have nice ankles? <laughs> At least you find you In Elle's home, she has three floors that include two stairway landings between each floor. On the first landing, there is a beautiful built-in bench seating. It's just a nice cozy place to curl up and read a book. But the second landing didn't quite have the same functionality. Woo! This is the space. I gotta go get the Play-Doh. Play-Doh's fun. As you can see, it housed a large coffee table and that's it. This space was used by Ford and Cohen to play with their toys, craft, and draw. But let's be honest, it wasn't really serving a lot of creativity or imagination. Now, I'm not sure if you've guessed already, but these two boys had one very big thing in common. What's this guy? How do you say that? Baryonyx. Wow. This is creativity that exploded. Do I see dinosaurs? Look, a raptor. That's a, that's a, 
Raptor. Yeah. No. Allosaurus. Raptors have a longer tail. Understood. Can you make a better raptor sound than me? Triceratops. Stegosaurus. That looks like a zucchini. I got four feet now. You look like a dinosaur. Are you fighting me? Mimis. Pelican and Mimis. Mimis. I think it's what you said. Who's making the names for these dinosaurs? I would have just called this bird. Dinosaur with steg thing, big horn dinosaur. One, two, three, dinosaurs! I just love the minds of children. They are so creative and unapologetic. It's inspiring. Not only did I need to bring functionality back to this space that was so underutilized, but I also needed to make it a space of creativity, inspiration, and grand imagination. Now, Elle is very particular about the design in her home and girl, I am with you. So not only was it my goal to match her Scandi inspired home decor, but also make sure that I give these two boys the coolest dynamite creative space they had ever seen. So this is how I wanted to do it. To start, I'm adding in a lovely pop of color by painting a small bar of muted blue that will wrap the entire space. On the back of the wall, I'll run a full length desk in natural wood, but dino it up with adorable dinosaur shaped stencils in a dark blue paint. Above the desk, I'll hang two paper rolls that will hang on wood dowels and DIY leather straps that are secured to the wall. The boys will each have their own matching leather pencil holder with a shared art caddy in the middle. The desk will be complete with a DIY adjustable shelf below and two white chairs that will help create a workspace for Ford and Cohen. On the right side, I'll create a DIY book rack to display their favorite drawing books and provide lots of arts and crafts storage with a bin organizer underneath. On the left side, I'll DIY three custom art display racks so the boys can show off their favorite art creations. Under their toes, I'll add a cozy rattan rug that will be customized with fun dino feet that run across it. And last, a creative space is nothing without cool art, so I'm creating cool 3D dino art that will look like they're jumping out of the art frames. Each dino will be spray painted to match Elle's color palette. Hey, Jurassic times call for Jurassic measures. <laughs> Uh, oh hum ho oh, hum. To get this DIY started, my first task was to complete the DIY desktop. To do this, I sourced a 20 by 96 3 quarter inch pine shop shelving board. I cut to the size to run the length of the wall. Then to make this desk come to life, my wonderful friend Rachel, who owns a company on Etsy called Green Eyed Craft Co, made me these wonderful dinosaur stencils. This is a stegosaurus. I got a little brontosaurus. And of course, I got a T. Rex. I will link her in the description box. You should go check her out. She is uber talented and can literally make anything customized on this planet. Color is the best part. This color is called Shipwreck. It's by Bear Marquis. It's just such a nice blue. Oh, it's so pretty. It looks so good even on this plate. Really simple, I taped down my dino stencil using painter's tape and using a two inch brush, I carefully brushed the dino design onto my desktop. So I'm just gonna like randomly put these all over the board. Okay, so I'm facing a dilemma. I realize like there's some holes that I would like to fill in, like there and here, but I don't want to do it with the dinosaurs I currently have. So I might need one more dinosaur cutout to kind of feel like this whole thing is complete. So I called my friend Rachel and of course she was just like, come on over, road trip. So I hopped in my car, went over to her space. That's so cool, it says Chewy, we're home. So this is how it works. We just put it on a computer and then it prints here. Wow, fancy. But while I was there, I had one more surprise I needed Rachel's help with. I found these adorable little kids aprons. I'm like, I can't, it's, it's adorable. <laughs> so we're gonna print Ford and Cohen's name on it with a dinosaur and we're gonna basically press it onto here. How cool is that? Ooh. 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 
So this is like super hot. This is like the giant pancake maker. Oh my God, it's perfect. This is so adorable. They're gonna love this. Nailed it. Nailed it. Thanks, Rachel. <laughs> this Anytime. is so cute. Now that this is done, I gotta go home and get this guy on that board. My board was done and to give it a nice protective top coat, I'm finishing this project off using Ferrothane's triple thick one coat clear finish in matte. And there we go, a dynamite tabletop ready for crafting. That evening, the DIY dino party didn't stop. I just decided it was a good time to get started on my DIY dino rug. <laughs> oh, good lord. Using the same bare color shipwreck, I mixed it together one to one with a fabric medium, which mostly helps to enhance the workability of a paint on a textile like this. It's going to improve the adhesion and the color penetration into the fibers of the rug, and it reduces dry paint from getting stiff on your rug. To create the dino foot template, I simply drew a dino foot shape on a piece of paper, cut it out, and used this to guide me as I worked my way up the rug. And just like that, we had a walking dino foot rug. The kids will have so much fun following the little feet. I think that's really cool. Love it, love it, love it. Good morning. Lots going on today. A lot of like mini moving parts. <laughs> yes, I was determined to finish as many DIY builds in one day as I possibly could, so I was multitasking a few projects at one time. To begin, I was tackling my art display rack using two one by three pieces of lumber that I was cutting down to three pieces at 36 inches. Then the last prep element I could do on these boards for now was to create a countersink hole on each end of the boards, which would allow my screw to lie flush with the board when I was ready to secure them to the wall. Okay, so the next thing I am creating a caddy. It's a two tier caddy that'll hold a whole bunch of odds and ends. To make my caddy, I used one one by eight by six and one one by four by six and a quarter inch plywood sheet for the bottom. There's a lot going on in this video, so I'm not gonna explain every single step to build this, but there will be a cut list and a full step-by-step -step guide on my blog that will be linked in the description box if you wanna check it out. Essentially, I needed to measure and cut all my pieces to their sizes, then assemble the caddy together using wood glue, clamps, wood screws, and in the smaller areas, I used a brad nailer. To fill any holes, I used wood filler in natural and sanded the entire piece smooth. I gotta say, that caddy turned out a lot better than I expected it to. I was obsessed. I almost kinda wanted to build one for myself, but that's okay. It's for two boys who deserve it, so you can have it. <laughs> Then to finish off my DIY day, I brought both the art hangers and the caddy inside to give them a nice coat of protective finish on top. I am officially going to cover them with the triple thick one coat clear finish in matte. We're going matte all the way. I don't know why I did that. It's like I was rapping. We're going matte, getting hat. We're going matte, I wear a hat. And I don't want no satin. Matin. I can't run. Once the finish had dried, using my Ryobi glue gun, I simply took four large clips and glued them in place on each board. Well, isn't that just DIY easy peasy? It's a new day, hopefully the last day of this entire build, assuming all goes well. I am building a box box that kind of looks like this. So it was important to me to create lots of storage in this space, but it was also important that I created something that would create some stability for that tabletop. I know that kids like to lean on things and crawl on things, so it was super important to me that I had that extra stability in the middle, just in case. Just 
taking extra precautions. By creating this adjustable shelving unit, I could add extra storage for paper items, all while giving the middle of the desk extra support. It's a win-win, really. What I love about this DIY build was that all the materials used for this project was using wood that I already owned. So not only did I get to build something that was totally cool, I also didn't have to buy any new materials to do it. Once again, all of the measurements and step-by-steps will be featured in my blog, but the key component for this build was using my drill press to create small holes for my pegs to make the shelves adjustable. To create the pegs, I simply used a metal saw to cut up small one quarter inch steel rods that I had lying around in my garage from the laundry hamper DIY. Look at me reusing all of my stuff. I love it. Holy crap, you guys, I built a box. And it's got shelves that you can change around. As a final touch, I wanted to give my box a contrasting color to the tabletop. It was going for a mixed wood look. So I opted to stain the entire piece using Barathane's Wood Stain Color Special Walnut to give it a nice, rich brown. What's new? Broken record over here. Just a big fan of the old Special Walnut. We're nutty over here. <laughs> I originally was going to purchase my bookshelf, but under the circumstances that all the stores are closed, I decided we're just gonna make it. My idea is to have two feet across, and then I'm gonna have this smaller piece here as like a little rail that goes across. Let's go DIY, let's go DIY. I keep saying I'm not gonna dance, but I still dance. You know, I gotta say, with so many stores overwhelmed from online purchases, I gotta hand it to all of you amazing creators who have turned the situation into an opportunity to make things you never would have if the stores were open. This is totally an example of that and I hope you get inspired to pick up a tool and make something you never thought you would make. I bet you would be surprised what you can accomplish. Check it out! I mean, it needs to be sanded, but that's not bad. Be a little bookshelf, yay! It was finally time to get crafty. Woo, this DIY is so much fun. To begin, I was getting started on my DIY leather pencil holders. Now, I didn't actually have the right class for this project, and at the time, the Michaels and fabric stores weren't open. So I ended up using leather snaps instead of rivets like I wanted to use. So perhaps this DIY was a little unconventional, but I was just making it work in a weird situation, you know? And I think it was still kind of cool. Pretty easy, you just need to pinch the corners of your leather square using a leather punch, create a hole, and then add your snaps or rivets. And Bob's your uncle. A fun alternative if you don't want to use snaps is to tie the corners with twine or rope. And that's it, and they're just so cute. That is absolutely adorable. The next leather project was to create my straps for my paper rolls. Starting with the same leather squares, I'm using my rotary cutter and a ruler to help cut strips that are one and a half inch thick. It's like floppy ears, you know? I feel like goofy. <laughs> Once the strips were cut, I used my leather punch and made holes through both ends that would fit a brass bolt source right from the hardware section in the Home Depot Canada. A little dowel sits in it like that. And what's really neat is I have a plug that I will put into the wall and then I'll screw this right into the plug. So it's going nowhere. Isn't that cool? So easy and so cute. Ah, it's a land before time. Into the wild, the dinosaur goes to find its next piece of food. Ah, I'm gonna eat you because I'm a carnivore. No, please don't eat me. Monster! Monster! No! Don't eat me! Ah, no! Pop up! Stop! You're ruining my scene! Ah, I'm a dinosaur too! No! Don't eat me! Ah. Clearly I have way too much time on my hands. <laughs> go isolation. I was definitely saving the best project for last. That or it really did fulfill that creative child inside me. It's time to saw some dinosaurs in half. Okay, who's on the chopping block first? Don't pick me. Oh, I'm picking you. Using a handsaw in my miter box, I carefully, let's use safety folks, sawed my dino bodies in half. These dinosaurs were ideal as they were hollow on the inside, so they were perfect for this kind of project. Some would say after I cut them, they were certainly dino-sore. <laughs> 
<laughs> okay. Once all my dinosaurs were cut, I took them outside and sprayed the plastic with a white primer. There we go, some white dinos. Once that was dry, I used three spray paint color choices, a green camouflage, a baby blue, and a nice dusty pink, which were all colors chosen from Elle's personal brand. Ooh, so pretty. The next day, I needed to prep my wood frame so that the dinosaurs had a secure backdrop to be glued to. To do that, I used a spray adhesive on the back of my picture frame and secured a white mixed media paper to it. I then simply used my Ryobi glue gun and glued my dinosaurs into the fitted frame. And just like that, I had created six cool 3D dino art pieces to hang on the wall. I just got to Elle's, yeah! I'm sanitized, I'm face masked. We're going in DIY Dynamite style, yeah! Everything feels so much harder with a mask. Elle and I had spoke previous to me coming into the space and we both agreed that if we were going to make this work, we had to reduce the amount of interaction everybody was going to have with each other. So Elle ended up leaving with the boys for the day, which allowed Jeff and I to come into the space with nobody there. And we took every precaution possible to make sure that we were being safe for us and for Elle's family. We reduced the amount of surfaces we touched. We wore face masks the entire time. We tried not to touch our faces and or the face mask at any point in time and we were pretty religious about using sanitizer and 100% alcohol <laughs> spray all day long. Yowza. It was a very uncomfortable and hot day but it was totally worth it because hot dog was I excited to finally give these boys the creative space that they've always wanted. Yeah. Let's do some painting. The paint I was using was Bear Marquee One Coat Guarantee in the color Oceanic Climate. I loved this color. It was like the perfect combination of blue and gray to create this like beautiful muted soft blue for this space. Ugh, just lovely. It was just so right. <laughs> Just nailed the color. Next up, I was adding floor safe pads to the bottom of the adjustable shelf to keep the floor safe and then installed two cleats on both wall sides so that the table could sit safely on top. For extra safety, I secured the tabletop to the cleats using L brackets underneath and small screws inside the shelf up into the table. I wanted that table good and sturdy. So once the table was fully installed, I actually realized that I wanted that blue strip to be bigger and sit just above the table. My bad. So I acted fast, taped off the wall again quickly and painted another section in. I'm really glad I did this though. It just looked so much more full and complete with the wider strip. Once the paint was dry, it was time to start installing all those awesome wall elements. I started with the leather straps that were going to hold up the paper rolls. One roll on each side, one for Cohen and one for Ford. Moving on, I installed the bookshelf and directly underneath that, I placed this awesome toy organizer in gray. So handy having all those extra bins for the toys and cool craft supplies. I'm also adding in two wood knobs for the customized aprons. Then I got my photo display secured and ready to hang art. And speaking of art, I got all six 3D dino art pieces hung and looking as glorious as I thought they would. After that, it was all about adding in all those final touches now that made this space truly one of a dino kind. After I had finished, I had left and Elle had come home with the boys and it was finally time for her to reveal the space and let them know that their purple haired friend had come to visit. Ooh, it's like Christmas. To keep up with our social distancing to the best of our abilities, I asked Elle if she could film the reveals for herself and for her two boys. And this is how they reacted. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Gosh, I just stepped on the cat. I'm so excited. Sorry, Bernie. What? This is 
beyond. Beyond! I was not expecting anything like this. This color is perfect. Welcome to your Dino Life Creative Space. Oh my gosh, look at this. This is next level. This is next level. So incredible. Oh my gosh, look at the carpet. This is crazy. What do you think, Bernie? It's not even for you and you're into it. Oh, wow, 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 wow. My brain can't even handle this. You get your expectations high and you picture maybe what would happen and this is just like, knocked it out of the park. Danny, you knocked it out of the park. Okay, I have to show the boys. <laughs> I have to show the boys. Are you excited? Uh -huh. Go up there. Should we go upstairs and see it? Yeah. New dinos? A match. That's a match. That's a match, yeah. That could be a game. Match all the dinos. Welcome to your dino Well, I think I can safely say that this space was fun, creative, dare I continue to say, dynamite. Everything was just perfect and I was so happy knowing the boys finally had a space of their own to paint and draw and color and imagine and just let their creativity go wild. Thank you so much for watching this wonderful DIY dinosaur extravaganza makeover. <laughs> Thank you again to the sponsor of this episode, The Home Depot Canada. Without you, this space would not have come to life. All of the items that you saw in this video have been listed in the description box, so make sure you go check them out. And let me know, what was your favorite part of this DIY? Was it the pictures, or the rug, or the tabletop? Let me know in the comment section below, and I will see you guys all next week. Bye bye Rawr! It's a beautiful